All right, let's get Clay in here. This is like the end of the Cold War. <laughs> Does he think we're ambushing him? Uh, I think he probably thinks that. We'll ask him, I guess. That's that's fair to assume by him, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been overly friendly, that's for sure. It's crazy how it drops. Like, it just was at up 17%. I re-click, it's up 10%. Like, I, I just don't understand. I'm ready to roll whenever, uh, whenever you were good. for you guys. Well, first question, do you think this is an ambush? I did. It's not. <laughs> it's not. I feel like I, I forget how we brought – oh, well, first of all, congratulations. Are in Thank order you. for you. So you sold, you sold to Fox, right? That's right. And, and d is the price public? Price is not public yet. Going to be public. Well, let me circle back around to first question first. Are we officially underway here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it, uh, Big Cat texted me. And he was like, hey, I, I shot some of the guys, uh, your cell phone number. Uh, and I was like, hey, just is this like, am I going in? Is there going to be like a list of 15 different like gotcha questions like Mike Wallace, 60 minutes style? Uh, and he was like, no, 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 no. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm happy to do it. I just I, we haven't talked since uh, I guess it's been like the U.S. Open uh, in person. Yeah. Well, like right. years ago. I, yeah. And I said that and I forget how we came up. Eddie, what were we talking about last week? Why did we bring we? Well, maybe we we're talking about the whole space in general. Is that was that what it was about the gambling space and how hot it was? I, I forget exactly what it was. You talked about how you guys talked about Barstool possibly making the acquisition of Outkick. Correct. Yeah. So, and I've all, and we talked about even before we kind of had a, a falling out. This is before, this is when we were by ourselves. And, yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm curious your view. You, so you just sold, everything's done with your deal. So, um, to me, with the pen, I know you actually own pen stock, right? Oh, yeah. Right. So, do you, it, there's a couple different things. Uh, we look at pens always like, hey, what are you guys interested in buying, acquiring? I feel yeah. like we're in a gold rush right now for the entire yeah. space where everything is overpriced. I think we probably played a fairly significant role in that because our price, which no one knew, I think when we sold, we sold uh, the valuation $450 million, And I, I, nobody at that point was like, oh, my God, they got them cheap. But then yeah. what happened with Penn Stock and everything, it just boosted anybody who was in the space into a different stratosphere. Um, I think that's 100% right. Yeah, so we've passed on a lot. We, we, I know you talked to Erica a little bit about it, but yeah. we're just kind of on the sidelines waiting for things to, to cool. So what is your, what is your thought on the – now, are you going to be exclusive, I assume, to Fox Bets now? Well, no, it's a good question. So let, let's let's circle back. Like you and I initially met eight years ago, I think now. Like, Is that the Super we Bowl were, in Arizona? Yeah, face to face. But we had conversations on the phone for people out there who wonder. Like you reached out to me as you were just starting. Like Big Cat hadn't been with you very Correct. long. Uh, right before I went to Fox the first time, uh, we talked because like I've gotten familiar with Barstool. I came on the rundown a couple of times with you guys. And I think that was like 2012 or 2013, like a long time ago, basically, in Internet years, like 80 years ago, Internet years wise. So that's how we initially met. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a good question. So uh, we talked to everybody like I know you guys talked to everybody. I had good conversations with Erica. I mean, look, you guys have done a fantastic job uh, making the Barstool brand extremely relevant already in the world of sports gambling. You know, I tweeted out. Uh, before the world went insane with COVID and everything else that, look, I bought stock in Penn. I thought it was a good move by them to buy you. I said that, you know, when it got announced at the Super Bowl back in the day, I thought it was super smart for a media company uh, to be aligning with a uh, aligning with a sports gambling company. Is it is to me, that's where everybody should go. Right. I think that's where the universe is headed. If I ran a gambling company right now, like, dude, I'd be trying to get Adam Schefter. I'd be trying to get Adrian Wojnarowski. Like, I'd want all the top uh, media figures in the world of sports inside of my brand, if that makes sense, inside of my universe. Yes. Uh, so we signed with Fox. Uh, we are still in charge of negotiating exactly what partnerships we are going to have. We are not exclusive to Fox Bet. Uh, we are at, at OutKick talking to everybody. Right now we're with FanDuel. Uh, but my understanding, and you know how it can work when there's multiple different companies involved, but as recently as today 
Uh, the idea is that we're going to be leading at OutKick the choice of who our partner is in the, in the time ahead, and that Fox is just going to basically put jet fuel behind us uh, and uh, and make as much money with us as as they can. That is an insane setup to me, unless I don't understand. Do you still – so right now, I don't own any of Barstool. Like, I, yes. I have a ton of Penn stock, and yep. obviously it, it, they kind of go together. Did you sell all of it, or do you still have I, – I sold all of it. So if you're sitting then, Clay, to what I am, like that scenario that you just laid out, I would never do with us. I would never – because Fox Bets is very important to Fox, isn't it? That's correct. And, and look, uh, our deal, candidly, with Fox, with FanDuel runs until August. So I think there are still a lot of different moving parts. Look, there, there are people that make way more money than you and me that are going to be involved in all of these decisions. But right now, uh, we are – like FanDuel is negotiating to try to sign us to a multi-year extension. Fox has the ability to, uh, to, to make – you know, sign off on every contract. But my understanding – is they want us to uh, to figure out where makes the most sense long run, uh, and uh, and and so look, I think that's way above my pay grade, candidly, um, and uh, and and the reason why I made the move that 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 I did is because I think the market space is just so hot right now, it is, uh, and and everybody is trying to figure out, you know, Levitard got whatever he did, 50 million from DraftKings, not even to sell anything. Yep. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, everybody rolling into the market. And I think ultimately there are going to be four or five guys uh, business-wise that are left standing in a big way. I think you guys are well positioned to be one of those guys. Uh, I think certainly FanDuel, DraftKings, uh, Fox is going to be. So kind of, again, this is above my pay grade. But Fox has a substantial equity stake in FanDuel yep. as well as in FoxBet. And I think they've got to figure out exactly how that process is going to play out. In fact, and this is public, but there's, a, there's an argument right now and a, a, you know, sort of a, a mediation that's going on over exactly what Fox is going to have to pay to buy in up to 20% of FanDuel. So, you know, there's no telling how many lawyers are involved in those cases, but I, I think it just speaks to how hot the business is right now that everybody's still trying to figure out exactly what's going on. But we're going to be, as a media company, OutKick is a big partner and component for Fox of their gambling future. Exactly how that's going to look, I think, is still to be determined in some ways. Right. I can't imagine both sides. I couldn't see. And I, it, who knows? I, it's one of those things sometimes you look outside, like, I couldn't see DraftKings being like, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a big deal or renew it with OutKick when we know potentially two of our competitors, like not yeah. only not only Fox yeah. but Flutter." So it's an interesting space. It's kind of like it, it, it is a lot, of, and we met with all of them. It's why I like us because some some yeah. of it goes pretty high above the pay grade. So on a scale of one to ten, how happy were you with your sale price? I mean, I think every, I'm, I'm super happy, right? I mean, I, I think we the, what, several years ago we talked, and I was like, "Yeah, my goal is to be worth a hundred million dollars." And I Hundreds. think you thought that was a crazy. I think you thought that was crazy. And by the way, congrats! I think you're worth a hundred million plus for sure. I'm going to be a hundred million dollar plus guy, uh, depending. You know, there's still uh, I have no idea what's going to happen with capital gains tax rates. You know, like I, I've never been a super rich guy before, so I've got a lot of money coming in now. Uh, and I don't know what taxes I'm going to have to pay before all is said and done. But and I'm sure you had this kind of realization, too. There is a, a great feeling, particularly in the universe we live now, to know that if you just decided to basically throw up the deuces and walk out like you could peace out and, and your whole family and everybody that you spend the rest of your life with, they're taken care of. And, I uh, cannot do know, that. Just to clarify, I, I may be able to do that in the future. Not money, but I am very much. The, our deal with Penn was very much. I have five years that I have to go balls to the wall. I, I am also going to continue to work. I'm, I'm locked in now for five years running Outkick, so I'm not going anywhere either. But I guess what I'm saying is, like, I've got three boys. Like, they will never have right. to worry about money for the rest of their life. And I think if you're a dad or you're a mom out there. That is now I've moved from, hey, can I take care of my kids financially? Because you know this, like, I mean, I'm 42 now. What I think you're 44. Yep. There were years out there where you're like, hey, one reason I think we've had the success that we have is 
we were willing to be embarrassed and humiliated starting things when, like, I've talked about this before. I wrote my first book. I went to a book signing in Birmingham and sat there by myself for two hours and nobody showed up. And if you've ever sat for two hours at an event where no one shows up or done an event like that, a lot of comedians have, certainly musicians have, oftentimes I think the reason why you succeed is you use that as fuel, one thing, but also you're willing to fail, right? right? And so I think most people are not willing to fail. They're not really aware of what it's like to be at the bottom. Uh, and uh, and so for, for me, you know, there was times when I wasn't making that much money and I had kids and I was sitting around like, man, you know, is this the right path? Like I've got a law degree. I still got law loans, outstanding, everything else. To be a guy who, uh, who can basically eliminate all that, I've moved to... How do I uh, how do I make sure my kids have a work ethic and a drive when they're going to have advantages, frankly, that uh, th that I never had. And I bet that you never had in the grand scheme of things, like kind of taking it to a different stratosphere, which is exciting. But it also brings new challenges. I don't want to sound like Biggie, but yeah, more money, more problems. Indeed. What now? Now that you sold it. And, and this is probably my distaste grew over w when we were having the disagreements is that I viewed a decent amount of what you did as sticky. And when I say sticky, that you were almost like pulling straight, like you knew the image that you were crafting that would best build your brand. And I didn't always feel like you believed some of the stuff you were saying and that you were almost in a weird way at a time shifted to be kind of like more like me because you were like, this is working down there. I'm in the South. I'm going to build this all to the point of where you got it to, which is I'm going to build something and sell it. Do you, is that a fair assessment by me? Or would you say you've been authentic to like your, your content basically? I, it, it's, I mean, look, I, I think if you went back in time, I started writing online in, uh, in 2004 which is eons ago, right? I started online, I was practicing attorney. And if you went back and read what I wrote in 2004, I think the criticism you could make of me is that I haven't evolved very much as a person in 16 years, right? I mean, we were doing drinking games for SEC games of the week. Uh, it was, uh, if anything, I think I've gotten a little bit more serious uh, going from 25 to 41 years old. Um, but, you know, I, I think if you talk to the only people I think you can judge that from, and, and I think it's a fair question, uh, would be people who've known me for like 20 years. And uh, it's interesting, like, I don't know about you, but one of my buddies got married a couple of years ago, and it was right after the First Amendment and boobs thing happened when I yep. went on CNN yep, and it turned yep. into a huge story. And all my law school classmates were there. Uh, this was a you know guy in Chicago. There's probably 40 people that I knew really well who had grown up with me in some way. And, and I was actually curious uh, with them. Uh, I, I said, uh, hey, do I seem any different on a public level now to you than I did when we were 22 years old and we would go out and have beers and sit around and watch games and talk? And they said, no, you're the exact same person. And I think if you talk to my wife, who I've been married to for 17 years, I think what she would say is, you know, when you go on the radio, you say a lot of things that I wish you wouldn't say because I think it's too controversial, but it's the same thing you say sitting around in our house. Um, I, I think, uh, so I think I've always said exactly what I think um, and that that, has, uh, that that has sometimes people haven't been exposed to it or whatever else. I think you guys, and this is a credit to you, I think your brand at Barstool, I remember the time we talked and I was like, hey, the emergency press conference. I was yep. like, you know what? That's a really good idea to use anytime there's breaking news. And I think I said back then, like, hey, that's something that I thought, hey, that's a good idea. I'll take it. So I don't know necessarily, like, I am open to good ideas. If I see them, I don't really care where they come from. And it, to the extent that you see a good idea and you're like, hey, I want to do that. An emergency press conference is a good example of that. Um, I use that phrase. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I really don't think. I think we overlap some. Well, we get um, lumped and, a lot. Yeah. I'll see like myself and your name. It's generally in the political realm yeah. that it's like something will happen and we'll just be put together. It's like I and now I I for sure and people even at this company, I've gone on, you know, Fox News, I've done all that yeah. stuff. I never say anything. I feel like you'll wade more political 
than I'm way I more will. political than you are. Correct. I think that's I think that's 100 percent fair. But from the outside of you, most people who don't like you or don't like me see us almost identical in the political <laughs> sphere and, and we're not. And I guess if right. you go on certain things, but the things I say, I'll try to steer away from a lot of topics, race being one of them that you'll dive headfirst dive into. into it. Yeah. Now, yeah, and, and, and is any of what, that because that that gets that activates a big, loud audience. Yeah. Well, look, I think a lot of people are not going to like you and me, and they're going to paint with a broad brush for us because we're in the Internet space and we say what we think. I think we say what we think oftentimes in different subjects in different ways. I'll give you an example. I think you've done a tremendous job on, and people will get fired up about me saying this. I think you've done a tremendous job. I donated to the Barstool Fund, but I think fighting back against COVID restrictions. I don't particularly see that as being political. I think we had to keep the economy open. Uh, I've been super fired up about that for over a year. I think we needed to play sports. Uh, and that's why sometimes when, you know, like I see people chirping or, or something from Barstool, somebody chirping at me. I try to stay out of a lot of that stuff over the past several years. I've been so focused on what we've been doing. Uh, but I've also seen like, hey, we're allied on a lot of things. Sometimes the people that hate you are also going to hate me. I'm not opposed to you throwing a punch and me throwing a punch back at them. But I think I think there's an over uh, over like analysis there. I think we are quite a bit different. I'm more political than you are. I think you have done a uh, a really good job of getting as much humor as you possibly can. I think you do a fantastic job of that. I would say you're more on the humor sphere. I would say I'm more in the political sphere. Now, sometimes we're going to overlap, but th that's why that whole thing about, oh, you're like, you know, you're somewhat similar. To, I I've never seen us as being that similar. I mean, I respect what you do, but I think for people who listen to both of us, there would be a pretty clear line of demarcation. I think we would overlap in some areas, uh, but I think there would be areas that I would go that, that you wouldn't and areas that you would go that I would. Here's a, a question for you. You know your price. I think I have an idea. It could have changed. If you were in my shoes, would you have bought OutKick or you think the market's too high right now for everything? Um, you know, so first of all, I think you did a great job with Erica. Like she is absolutely, She's I think, awesome. just killed it. She's, I mean, in my, and I, it's limited interaction, right? I'm not pretending to be an expert, but I, there are a lot of people that overlap that we're friends with that are really impressed with her and, uh, and I, in, in media spheres. And I've been impressed uh, with her in my, uh, my interaction as well. Um, I think we could have made sense. Um, and, and that's why, look, I, I, I will talk to anybody, and I think you're the same way when when we didn't put OutKick on the market, right? So what happened was we started getting people contacting us saying, hey, we'd like to buy OutKick. We want to sign confidentiality agreements, look at your books, you know, know what you guys are capable of and what you're doing right now. And so when that started to happen, uh, I said, well, look, if we're going to have conversations with some people, like, I want to make sure we talk to everybody sure. in the space because I want to see the best possible fit. And candidly, to your point, Fox is just I feel very comfortable with them because I've been working off and on uh, with the Fox guys for eight years. Uh, so I feel like when they say, hey, we want you to keep doing exactly what you're doing now and just expand the media sphere around you. Uh, we're going to put you on Fox News more. We're going to, uh, you know, overlap some see Fox, see OutKick as a bridge that can connect Fox Sports and Fox News. I believe that. And, and, you know, in this process, there's a lot of people who sell you things like, oh, we want you to be the exact same person you already right. are. But a lot of times then corporate comes in and says, oh, but by the way, can you not say that or can you not do this video or we're getting heat from an advertiser over this or that? And I feel like Fox, when you look at the way they stand in behind uh, guys like Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity for years and years and before that, uh, a lot of their other talent, they're comfortable in the heat. And I think a lot of media companies, you know this, they say they're comfortable in the heat, but they don't really know what it's like to stand in a fire, right? right. And you guys at Barstool are in fires every day. We have been in fires every day at OutKick for things that I say or things that I do. And the partner needed to be right. So to answer your question, which I'm circling back around to now, I respect the fact that Erica has stood behind you and has stood behind the Barstool brand. And so I felt like if we ended up together, that 
that you guys would be comfortable with the heat that we might give off on sometimes because the truth of the matter is you can't have loyalty to a brand in this day and age without occasionally finding yourself in a fire. And I think a lot of times these big companies are like, oh, we like the positive, but then there's this negative story out there. Totally. And I'm like, you understand those are connected. You can't have one without the other. Totally. And we've been lucky enough for what do the diligence. Churning was good yeah. like that. And Penn is the same. I mean, is so so if I understand that a little bit of what you said, would you say that this the Fox deal was not one hundred percent gambling driven? I, gambling is it, is it, the deal. I don't think would have happened at all without that. Look, we have been, I think, uh, uh, the best I, based on the numbers that I've seen. And you guys don't count as an affiliate, obviously, because you're your own brand. Right. I don't think anybody has delivered more signups as a uh, as a company as an affiliate than Outkick has for FanDuel so far uh, in the uh, in the in the process of what we've done so far. So can I ask and you so, this? Then the obvious question. If DraftKings seemingly will pay for anything, they just spent 50 mil just to sponsor, yeah. why wouldn't they, if, if those numbers are true, were you surprised they didn't come in with uh, an offer that would have blown Fox out? Because you haven't heard Fox but buying a much. Fox, look, the numbers we got that were the most candidly were, I don't even know how all this works. I'm not a, I'm not a business guy, right? I, I'm a content guy. I mean, I understand, you know, yep. basic business. Uh, but I know what I do well, and that's kind of managed content. And by the way, one thing that I've had more respect for what you managed to do is it is a whole different business to be managing a lot of other people who are working for you as opposed to just creating the content yourself, yep. right? And I don't think a lot of people contemplate that when they think about a business like Barstool. And I think you almost have to be in it yourself to understand like all the little issues that arise on a day-to-day -day basis with just managing people. Uh, both tech side, you know, ad side, and certainly content creation side. Um, but the people that offered the most were were actually some of the the spats that are out there. Like they're they have raised so much money. But that my concern with partnering with some of those guys was that seemed to me like I could take more money, uh, and and that's great. But then I have no idea what the future holds, right? Because it seems to me like are, is that company going to be successful? Like, uh, are, do they really know what they're buying or do they just like the sizzle that, you know, the numbers that we're producing? Uh, but to me, to answer your question. So did DK I make an offer? That, uh, yeah, several different SPACs did. Uh, so you're, so co had, you're considering them still a SPAC? Yes. Okay, got it. So I don't, I don't yeah, know Yeah, like that. they're in the process. Yeah. Like, and I, I, you know, there's all these confidential, but, it, but there are a bunch of different companies out there that are in the process of raising money that will eventually be going public. Many of them have a focus in the world of sports and gambling right now. And so they're kicking the tires on a ton of different companies. So yes, but I felt more comfortable with Fox. Now, I think Fox of all of the big media companies is doing the best job with gambling. Like if you talk about ESPN, if you talk about CBS, NBC, anybody that's putting on games, I think Fox is doing the best job. I think we're gonna fit with them greatly. But if I were running DraftKings or if I were running FanDuel, I think I said this earlier, like I would be trying to buy every single media. I, I think Penn got it right when they bought you guys, right? And I said earlier, Schefter, the Woges, the guys who break news, I would want those guys on my website. Like I would want you going to FanDuel.com for whatever news Schefter is going to break about Aaron Rodgers. I would want that appearing on my website. If I were running their company, I think that the value of a guy like that breaking news uh, it, and for your brand to see on the screen, FanDuel's Adam Schefter reports, you know, Aaron Rodgers is headed to X team, uh, which would immediately happen. Like to me, that's a no brainer. I'd go hire and sign every one of the biggest people. So, I don't think a lot of those companies candidly really understand the media business yet, or even understand that they're in the media business yet. I, and I think Penn, uh, has been rewarded because they got this early on with you guys. I think it was a super smart move. Yeah, I, I, I think the answer, the question with that is it's these unlimited budgets that, and, and that's been kind of what I've been saying with the pen on the business side. We've decided at this point, unless it's something absolutely that we think is a home run, we're not going to pay what we think could be in five years a 10x value because, like you said, it's a gold rush right now. And, and, I, and the, sorry to cut you off, but the other challenge, the thing I thought about the most is are we selling too soon? 
And I'm sure you thought about that on some level too. Like, I'm like, Hey, if I wait, I, you know, we never took any venture capital money. We, we, that, that was kind of, like, I just didn't want to have to deal with all that. Right. So I owned, you know, the vast, vast majority of Outkick. And I was sitting here thinking, Hey, am I selling too early in the game? Should I wait till next year? Should I wait till two years from now? And, uh, and that's the thing you never know for sure. That's the thing that I worried about the most in my head was just, are we selling too soon? Is this the second inning? And we should be trying to wait till the fifth inning to cash in. Could we be triple what we are now in two years? I think we could and may well be. Uh, but what happens with the market? Are there going to be a lot of failures because businesses that don't have, like we were very profitable. We were scheduled to make in 2021 uh, close to $10 million, right? In profit, not in revenue. So a lot of these gambling companies are making no money. No, they're and not, so not I'm making, they're around. getting killed. Like yeah. anybody who's playing on a big level, really with the exception of us, because the the marketing budgets are so astronomically out of That's whack, right. they're playing a zero sum game where they want to be one of the last standing and recoup it. But yeah, I I never That's thought we're question, selling. Timing wise. What's that? That's the question. Yeah. Well, that's the biggest thing I thought about. Am I selling too soon? Yeah, I, I didn't think that. I love the price. I've said this before. The And, and the churning guys are professional negotiators. Like that, yeah. they're, they're, yeah. they named the price. Penn said yes. So I was never, oh my God, we sold too little. Now, if we weren't the first one to sell, what would we sell for? And I, I think you're looking at like a billion dollar sale based on what happened, but we set the market. So it, it, it yeah. is what it is. It's no different when a, you know, a pitcher signs early and then like, yeah. they look, it, it, that's kind of the deal. Um, yeah, it's an interesting spot. What did you think? Like, for instance, what you said, I said it when we were talking, I think Dan, for example, is one of the most underrated, influential, like obviously people know him. But I don't think, unless you're kind of in the internet world of Barcelona, people, a lot of times it varies. You've said it in the past, I think more when you're trying to be mean to Barcelona, being like, Barcelona's all part of my take. There's like, that's all they have. People don't realize how many different people here have pretty yeah. big followings and could survive on. So you're getting a, a strong network, but that that's how it is. Um, like, how, like, if I look around the world of the internet, there was you I knew who had influence, McAfee for sure, um, but there's not too many out there. There really isn't. That's right. There's very that, few. That's been, that's been the biggest challenge, I think. We've talked about this privately. I don't know if we talked about it publicly, but the biggest challenge is uh, finding talent. Talent's rare, right? It doesn't matter what the industry that you are in is. Like, there's this illusion back in the day when people started blogging for the first time. I said I started writing online for the first time in 2004, uh, and – like there's this, I thought when I was 25 years old and I started writing, hey, uh, in five or 10 years, I'll find younger versions of me and then I'll kind of step into more of a management role and less of a content role. And, you know, here I am 42 years old, you know, 17, 18 years later, I'm working harder than I ever have before because I haven't been able to find that many younger guys or girls that I could kind of start to develop where I become more of a manager. And I bet you found that to be the case too. There's there there are lots of people out there who want to do what we do. There are very few that can handle the fire and will get up and do it every single day. What I found on early at Outkick was somebody would write like a good story and it might go viral back in the day and people would read it and they'd want to sit on their laurels and enjoy it for like a month. And I'm like, dude, you got to write something right. again tomorrow, right? It may not be a home run. It's certainly probably not going to be a grand slam. But the number of people who want to get out of bed and work hard every day in our industry is pretty small. The number of people who will do it well is even smaller. There's just not a lot of difference makers, man. And I, and I think that's probably what was one of the things that people got the most wrong about the Internet. Uh, you've seen it. I mean, I look for talent every day. Yeah, it's hard. People who will work and do what we do. There's just not a lot of them who are that good at. Yeah, no, I agree with that. We've been we've been good and lucky. The early guys I hired were spectacular, and yeah. we've been able to diversify. And, and Paul, who's in here, who I don't give a ton of credit, like our social media, like it, we we meet so many people, and, and it's amazing the difference in how people know Barstool. Like they may just yeah. think we're an aggregate Instagram account or they may That's think right. for me like, hey, you eat pizza, right? Or pardon my take or call her daddy. We've been able to diversify and, and have enough different vehicles for it. 
Last thing I'll let you with, I'm gonna say this, and, and he's not going to like it, but Rico Bosco finally admitted he didn't steal the San Diego State pick. <laughs> he didn't want it on the record. He finally admitted it. So that we can that put That is behind. old school. How many years does that go back now? That's an old school – Two presidencies. That yeah, is an old school reference. Two presidencies. Yeah. He, he. For those who don't know, Rico gave out a San Diego State pick that then Clay gave out, and he accused him of stealing the pick. He's finally admitted that wasn't true. It was a Christmas Day game, if I remember correctly, like literally like a couple of presidencies ago. I think Obama was president at the time of this controversy arising. Um, but uh, but seriously, uh, this has been fun. Congrats for everything that uh, that you guys have done, and you know. I mean, I think really you can sit back now and say you, Simmons, and me, if you think about people who and maybe Levitard's going to end up doing it as well, but for people who have created something that really didn't exist um, and, and done a good job of it in sports, it's not a long list. And uh, I mean, it's, I think it's something to you know, sit back and think about and, uh, and be happy about whenever you decide to, uh, to finally hang up, the, uh, hang up the whistle, so to speak. Last Seems like you're question. having a good time of it. Honest yeah. answer. I don't know if you ever give a totally honest answer. If we had to put our fortunes at the end of this, it's such a champagne problem. Winner take all. Who ends up with the most money, me or you? Who you got? What's your goal now? I never necessarily have. I'd like to be a billionaire, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. That I, Like sports yeah, so team. You guys ridiculed me a couple of years ago because I said I wanted to get to $100 million. Hundreds. Like, oh, never you happen. said hundreds. Like, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'm going There's to get 200. to hundreds, right? I'll get to more than a hundred million. I feel confident about. Uh, but I, the question I have now is, I don't know that I'm going to be that risky in the money. Like I've got a buddy who I went to law school with that wants to buy his own pro sports team. He's way richer than me. He's the most successful guy that I went to law school. By with. the way, I don't think like, I'm going to get a billion. That would be like, yeah, not to confuse no, that, but. I, uh, yeah, I I I, uh, I think the number that I'll end up around is uh, so you can tell me whether or not you think this number is uh, is crazy. I think I can get to two fifty or three hundred, assuming that I, my wife doesn't kill me and you know like I don't get divorced and, and have to give away half of it. Like I I feel like when I die, I'll be at two fifty or three hundred. Where do you think you'll be? I have no idea. I mean, so yeah, you're talking I mean, I about investing like in doing other things with the money. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have no idea. I don't look at. I just look at like what the this pen thing will end up in. There's a lot of loose ends. I mean, if pen stock goes ballistic again, then that changes. You know, who knows? I took all. So I took all cash. Right. So I'm not invested in any company. Like I have no. I mean, I'm gonna obviously like I've got pen stock. I've got FanDuel stock through Flutter. Like just individual investments that I've made. Uh, but I sold Outkick for cash. So. Uh, you know, like my idea is I'm starting to meet with financial advisors and everybody else. I'm going to be smart about the investment, but it's not like I'm suddenly going to push it all in the table and be like, I'm right. buying five million shares of this stock and I'm just going to roll with it. Uh, so, I, you know, I think I should I'm buy some safe mode. What do you think? Of, are you do you follow the crypto stuff? Yeah, I'm not smart enough to really understand some of this stuff. Like, you know, I follow the crypto stuff like I my theory is if I can't explain the business and why I think it makes sense in like a paragraph in my head. Um, crypto to me is just something that I, I understand the concept of it, but it's just a level of tech knowledge and financial literacy as it pertains to currency valuations. Like I'm never going to be a crypto guy, personally. I also think I'd lose my damn passwords at some point. I can barely remember how to log yeah, in my yeah, emails. Sometimes. You're, you're showing, you're definitely showing your age. You sound like what That's I would no say. Doubt. I mean, but I I'm mean, in but on it. I'm, I'm the leader of Safe Moon, so it is what it is. All right. Should well, I be buying Safe Moon? What's the, I don't even know what that is. Safe Moon is, uh, it's one of these little shit coins. Although the Safe Moon crowd gets very angry if you say that. Um, we're the currency of Gambia, and it. I have 4.5 billion Safe Moon. Safe Moon. Coins. So, how much cash did you actually have to put in to buy that? I put in forty thousand, not a ton. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I could do. I, I'll put it if you if you are telling me that this is going to be a wild success. I am not I will... telling you that. I am. I am definitely <laughs> not telling you that. But it could be. But I am not telling you that. The more what I find with any of these, the more influencers or people who have followings who say they're buying it. If that buys it, that could be the. I mean, Doge is forty k. 40k is a risk that I am. I didn't know how much you would put in. No, like I would. I will. 
you remember I lost fifty thousand dollars trying to sell pants back in the day. You remember that yes, story? I like yep, I got yep. into that. Like I've had all sorts of ridiculous things that I thought were going to make sense that didn't. Uh, I'm in a spot now where I can lose forty thousand dollars so, on a ridiculous. So if you can figure out how about. to buy it, buy it. I will try to figure out how to buy. That it. is not the easiest part. All right, thank you, Clay. <laughs> Take Good care. Good stuff. Congrats. Fun time. Thanks. See ya. See ya. Get another guy on the. Um, Safe Moon Train. Are you guys friends now? It feels like you guys are friends now. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be animosity. Once he sells, it's like, you know. It's, it's he, over? A little bit. It, 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 you know, and I think it was for the most part being truthful. Or maybe he just changed his his content scheme and the stuff. Like you said, I, he is more political. I don't like when I get compared to him because I think he does play that race card in right on the edge of race baiting, which I do not do. But – it was interesting. And it I don't know what he says is going to be worth hundreds of millions, like I guess. If you're like an early investor in the ne- next Uber, yeah, you're going to make, but who knows? I who guess do you we'll think's find more hated, out. you or him? What? Who do you think's more hated, you or him? Me. You think so? I just think I'm much bigger than he is. Yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, you're more beloved regardless, but. Yeah. But, but you if know, you're just he, doing sheer numbers, probably me. But like he said, what I, I almost have that clip, like we're not the same. Like that that does bother me when we're putting the same. I'm curious to see what his sale price actually is. I thought my guess was going to be about 50 or 60 million. Yeah, I was because he activates that button, like you said. And that's why I would say there's a chance it could be him. But you're right. Just by sheer numbers, you have a lot more. He um, talked a little bit around the fact, which he always does. It's like if your numbers are so great, why didn't DraftKings make a huge offer? That makes no sense to me. Yeah, well, like, that was a good conversation. He, he got bought by a non-gambling company at heart, in a way. Like, FanDuel and DraftKings will spend. Will spend. But none of us stepped up. Kind of the same now, that happened with Action Network. Now, did you have the opportunity to take all cash like he did? No. No? No. Thank God I didn't. Because it's so been so beneficial for you so far? Well... It's the stock price is 26 and it's at 82 or whatever. So, I mean, when it was at four, I'm like, damn, I wish I took all cash. But that's never an option because they want me incented. Yeah. That's so interesting that he's not that. Like, why would he? Why would they do that, though? Honestly, what stock do they have? Uh, That's a good point. It's a good point. I guess I guess I don't know. And it, it, it that arrangement makes no sense and he didn't say it outright he's like the powers that be your fox bought outkick fox owns fox bet why would fox bet let outkick go do a deal with DraftKings? it just makes no sense 